Good morning, everyone. I'm Dion from QUT. Um, today, to talk to you about the optimization of interactive mobile video experience. Um, I think to begin with, I'd like to give you a um, very good video that we produced together to actually give you a picture of what we've done so far. Using the iPlayer on your mobile phone, you can watch the news however you want and wherever you want. Let's say you're on the bus and you want to know what's happened this morning. Using your iPlayer, you can immediately see a list of the latest news videos. Each video has a title, tags, and rating. So you can see here we have a customized player, whereby you can view the news descriptions in a pop-up widget. Or, if you want to jump to a particular segment, you can do that in our Scene Navigation widget. For more information about this video, you can click on the Read More button and find related news articles. You can also share the video using email, or with your friends on Facebook and Twitter. You can also post a rating and comments. When you've had a busy week and you didn't get the chance to catch up with the news, you can still view it through a visual daily summary. You can also choose to watch a video summary of a particular day or week. So we have a customized uh, iPhone video player that is able to uh, have some interactivity components with it. Now, we believe that we are delivering a very timely and important research because of this worldwide consumers' uh, potentials, including like US, Japan, and China, which are our, some of our biggest markets today. So um, the question is, how can, we do it, uh, how can we do that without much of production efforts? So taking the existing contents, which are mainly for the web video, for example, how do we do that? In our t uh, research, we deliver the three underlying technologies. The first two are basically the content preparation that eliminate the manual tagging, and, the uh, and we also want to maximize the content reuse. So how can we draw together all these contents? How can we annotate, uh, annotate them and put them together, summarize them somehow? The third one, which is very important also, is how to adapt the video quality so that it's, the, uh, it's a very optimized version for mobile delivery. All right, so my next slides, I'll just show you some of the latest results of our work. The first one is topic extraction from speech, which um, basically you can see here is the speech uh, transcript from a particular news video. It can be anything, guys. So um, you can uh, we can actually detect things like event, organization, company, people, and all that sort of things, which are very important. Uh, in uh, stories. Um, so you can imagine that you can apply it for anything, really. The second one, which is about um, also content extraction, is using optical character recognition and analyze that and somehow extract some of the topics from that as well as important contents. In this case, we give you an example of cricket and tennis match so that we can get the scoreboards. Now, using that sort of thing, we can actually do um, segmentation of the videos because we know when the uh, particular point is being scored and that sort of thing. The last part of our content extraction is actually recognizing facial expressions from people in the video. Now, why is it very important? Uh, supposedly, if we have movies, um, then we can actually say, okay, can we summarize those ones that have the happy or sad moments? Um, some of those things are very important, uh, and likewise, we can actually use it to actually look at the uh, users uh, and how they react to the contents and actually somehow look at what is the important contents accordingly. Now, after we are able to annotate the video contents, what can we do with it? We can do all sorts of things, such as summarization and visualization. Here, the example we give you is the uh, summarization of news video here in terms of what are the contents, which you've probably seen before. Movies-wise, we can actually look at you know, like, uh, some of the keywords, such as cyborgs uh, uh, and all that sort of things. And the interesting one here, if you're a sports fan like me, we'd like to be able to browse based on the uh, players. Uh, uh, I don't know if you're a fan of Fernando Torres, but you can actually uh, get all the videos from him. Not only uh, we are able to summarize and uh, visualize, but also we can reuse as much as contents from around the particular media items and enrich the whole story. So here you can see, let's say we talk about the first case of swine flu in WA. 
we are able to um, aggregate the video with the other contents, including images and videos and so on. All right, last part of the thing is how to deliver it. On a very limited bandwidth, how can we minimize the, uh, the bit rate without sacrificing the perceptual quality? Well, guys, the good news is that uh, all our vision here, we don't focus on the whole lot, right? We focus on the region of interest. So supposedly, if we basically rest uh, retain the high quality within the region of interest and basically uh, degrade the quality a little bit, then we users shouldn't notice it that much. And the good news is, by doing that, you can see here the top graph showing you everything is in high quality. The bottom one shows everything is in low quality. The middle one is our encoding. So by retaining the region of interest, we only sacrifice a little bit more of the bit rate, but we get a lot more better contents out there because people keep on focusing on the region of interest. And that is my next uh, last slide. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and just a, a, a compliment for my team who is really working hard and making it all worth it and making it really fun down in PUT. Thank you.